Hello, this is Laura O'Brien from the Irish Pagan School and I'm here to talk today about mythology. So my focus is on Irish mythology, but really I guess these thoughts would apply to any mythology, any Celtic mythology, world mythology. But I was thinking about why we need mythology. Now, bear with me, some of this is coming from having studied psychology and having a very keen interest in the concept of archetypes, but that's very grounded in a practical, spiritual reality of our gods. So um, these things are very real to me when I talk about archetypes. I'm not removing the reality of the gods and goddesses of Ireland, just to be very clear. But I do believe that myth arises out of our everyday reality and likewise affects our everyday reality. And there is very much a symbiotic relationship between mythology um, and that could be, you know, ancestral figures, heroes, gods, goddesses, other world creatures, you know, fantastic places in the other world, all those things um, I'm classing under Irish mythology. So all of those things do affect our everyday reality. And I think it's very clear to me how symbiotic the relationship is between Irish people, Irish traditions, Irish culture and our Irish mythology. So very much a cause and effect situation going on both ways, right? And mythology is not fiction. I think that that's a very modern concept where you know, we hear about stories and we don't see them the way our ancestors would see them as teaching tales. And that's a very important distinction to actually remember when the mythology was being taught. It wasn't being taught as mythology, obviously, um, in ancient times. It was just being taught as stories, being told stories. And these stories had lessons and they had relatable elements because again, they come from our reality. And even the most mythical and heroic and magical characters and personages within these stories had very relatable elements. And again, that is very, very clear in Irish mythology. We don't have these like high up, worshipped, venerated, you know, gods and goddesses who are removed from our society and our culture. They're very much their stories and their personalities are very much hooked into their communities, their culture and the society in which they lived and functioned and ruled, you know, in some cases. So Jung said that um, mythology was not fiction, that it was, uh, ba I'm paraphrasing, but basically that it was repeated facts observed over and over again. So these are our truths and these repeated experiences, repeated thoughts, repeated patterns are what our ancestors were telling the stories about because again that's where the lessons were, right? So this is very obvious in our rites of passage. Um, you know a lot of the Irish mythology uh, would cover, like we have different genres, so you would have groups of death tales, you would have groups of, um, you know, people falling in love, sto group, genre, story groups of uh, love tales, all that kind of stuff, um, births, you know, births, marriages, deaths, and everything in between. So these kind of life events and rites of passage, which are universal, they're not just Irish, obviously, but in Ireland, we have very strong story groupings around these rites of passage and these would be archetypal um, elements within our lives again that's very relatable even if the stories the like the context of the stories or the magic within the stories is not relatable the actual events would be you know um so you've got also these moments of, of great joy and great grief. So obviously you've got the, the highlights, the wins um, of life, and that is echoed in our everyday life as well. Obviously we all have our peaks and valleys. We all have our triumphs and our griefs. And 
those griefs then would be, you know, the tragedies. They are reflected in our own personal traumas or tragedies within our own lives. So again, you can see those mythical elements are part of our own reality. And because of the repetition, myths are stories that we've come to trust. And whenever, as humans, just whenever we have to, um, you know, give bad news or anything, we will always try and do that in the presence of people or environments or, you know, situations that the other person will trust, that, that will make them feel comfortable. And that's what we gravitate to as humans. Um, we try and make things as comfortable as possible, especially around bad news or difficult times or difficult circumstances. Again, those losses, those griefs, those tragedies, those traumas. And our mythology, our stories, does that for us in a lot of ways, you know, and almost kind of prepares us for those moments in our own lives so that we have something to fall back on. And this is why our ancestors were telling these stories. So these are the stories that we've come to trust. And they're also the um, Garoj o Krulik in the Book of the Kailuk mentioned how, um, uh, I'll just get it right. He said, myths are the truths of the world. And that really struck me. And actually that passage um, and th that section of the book uh, really kind of inspired me. That's what I'm reading currently. And it really inspired me to kind of go down this road. But it, it is all stuff that I have talked about before, definitely on my own uh, channel and at the Irish Pagan School in our classes. Uh, these are themes that come up again and again. The idea of living traditions, the idea of a symbi symbiotic relationship between us and our gods. The idea of cause and effect, of mythology affecting reality and reality affecting mythology. These are very much concepts and ideas that I have been <laughs> mulling over for many, many years. Um, but I do recommend that book, the book of the Kailuk, uh, Garoj O Krulik, Krulik, in case you're wondering how to pronounce his name. Um, it is Stories of the Wise Woman Healer. And there is, uh, there's, there's a huge amount in that book. Um, there are definitely stories, but there's a lot of much bigger concepts around mythology and around, um, you know, the work and the role and the symbolism of women within Irish vernacular culture and traditions. And our Irish ancestral cosmology, the the way our ancestors in Ireland viewed the world, their worldview, their cosmology, created these stories. These were the truths that they wanted to tell. These were the lessons that they wanted to impart. This was the preparation that they wanted to give their children and their grandchildren and on down the lines. And these are the stories that we still have. We still have access to. As modern people, we can look at these stories sometimes, especially when we get the really good translations of like original lore and manuscripts and all that stuff. It can seem a little bit dense to us. It can seem a little bit impenetrable, but that is really where the wisdom is. And obviously in the hands of a skilled storyteller, uh, that can be made relevant for a modern audience. Um, the mythological characters can be made relatable. And I, I kind of, I, I fancy that that's what myself and John do through our own storytelling. We both have books um, available. Mine is Tales of Old Ireland Retold, which you can you can buy online. And John's is uh, Tales of a Dagda Bard in multiple volumes. And this is our attempt to make these mythologies and to make this, these stories relatable for our modern mentality. And there's no issue with that because culture and tradition doesn't it shouldn't stay frozen and i'm not saying i am not saying that anybody has a right to just kind of take it change it do what they want with it that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about making it accessible and making sure that the people who need to learn the lessons who need to who need to relate to this mythology have access to it but very much rooted and grounded 
in the concepts, the ideas, the ancestral wisdom. And um, so it really kind of has to come from source again and has to be translated through our modern Irish cultural lens so that we can find a way to 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 bridge, if you like, to um, bridge through the, the timelines and to make sure that what we are producing in a modern concept, whether that's our stories, whether that's our classes, our teachings, our YouTube, uh, subscribe for more, by the way. And, you know, all of these are efforts on our part to make sure that the ancient ancestral vernacular cosmology, and I know that those are all big words, but like, you know, what that means is the vernacular is the everyday, the um, cosmology is the worldview, and obviously ancestral, you know, so that that lineage, that that, that tradition of making sure that the mythology is accessible to the people who need to hear it and learn from it, and also then feedback in a healthy way, in a respectful relationship, because it is about relationship. It's about core quiveness, which I talk about all the time, um, right relationship with our deities, with our mythology. And again, you know, I'm talking about stories and archetypes and all the rest of it, but this is very real to us. So I just want to highlight that again. Um, we have a very living relationship with these entities with the gods and goddesses with the deities with the heroes with the landscape with the this world and the other world uh the she you know all of this is very real to us in the everyday so it kind of is on us then to make sure that those stories and that reality is transmitted into everyday reality so that's our mission um, you get to decide whether we're doing a good job on that or not, obviously. Um, if you do want more, make sure that you go over to the irishpaganschool.com because it's not just us doing this work. We have many, many fantastic Irish native teachers over there who are doing exactly, you know, on the same mission as we are. So um, make sure and check that out. There's free classes and paid classes and you can, you can get what you need over there. So um, links to everything below. Like, subscribe, do all that good stuff and I will see you in the next video. Slán!